Hey everybody, I wanted to make a little video here on a subject that has come up a few times with uh, my customers. And that is, how can I, as the customer, use my own certificate for the MPS extension? So let me uh, let's jump over here real quick, <clears throat> and I want to show you what uh, the documentation uh, states um, about using your own certificate. So if you go down in here, this is the document that talks about how to set it up, so on and so forth. And down in here, <clears throat> it makes a comment about how you can use your own certificate here. The problem is it doesn't actually tell you how to do it. And short of you reverse engineering the config script, you're probably not going to be able to know how to do this. So hopefully this video will help you if this is what you're trying to do. All right, so let's start with the fundamentals here. We have, I have issued to my NPS server a server authentication certificate. It's good for five years came from my own CA and it's got the right name on it and this is important here if we go and we look at the subject name of the certificate it is CN equals my tenant ID and OU equals Microsoft NPS extension that's um, necessary because when the MFA DLLs look inside the uh, local machine search store it's looking for certificates with this nomenclature. So when you request a certificate, you request it with CN equal your tenant ID comma OU equal NPS extension so that that's what the subject name became, becomes for that certificate. Um, and, the, uh, and the purpose of this certificate is going to be server authentication. Okay, so we now have our certificate. Now we need to go through the process of actually being able to register the certificate. So what you do, uh, you're going to go ahead and export <clears throat> that certificate. I have it over here on my uh, desktop, you can see. But when you export it, make sure you export it with the private key. All right, so now we have the certificate here. It has a, the private key with it. <clears throat> and we need to register the certificate with Azure. Let's talk through what we're doing here. All right, so the first thing that we're doing is we're actually connecting to the MSOL service. And this is going to generate the authentication prompt, the modern authentication prompt. Uh, you need to be a global admin to perform this function because what you're doing is you're registering a, a certificate for the purpose of authentication against the tenant. Um, once that completes, it performs these next steps, which is basically uh, essentially looking for the, the uh, certificate. It then opens up the certificate, grabs thumbprint, etc. It registers that new, it registers that uh, cert ID, the thumbprint with Azure, this is the app ID. It's registering it against. This is common in all uh, tenants. This app ID is the Azure multi-factor client app ID. That's the same in every tenant. And so it registers against that uh, enterprise app uh, for the purpose of authentication. So let's go down here, let's clear our screen. Uh, I did that wrong, let's clear our screen. Okay, so now we are going to, uh, I won't bother stepping through this, I'm just gonna run the entire bit here. 
So let's get our pop up. Okay, so there is my global admin. I get redirected to my ADFS server. Uh, and then we are good. Then it completes it, and we are all done. Okay, so I have a cert. I have registered that cert with Azure. I should be good. Let's test it. Let's see if my Android machine wants to work with me here. And here is uh, NT Red Ping, my radius client. So let's send the request. Sent the request. I should have something by now. I don't have anything. What's wrong? Well, let's take a look at our event logs. <clears throat> We look here 246. We're getting uh, ESTS token error. Um, well, that can't be good. So ESTS is the enhanced secure token service that is uh, basically the gateway um, for Azure authentication. And we're getting all this error. Here's what you need to focus on this specific. Uh, message here key set does not exist so that is um, essentially telling us that it can't read the private key of that certificate and so when you import when you issue a certificate and that certificate is in your store that doesn't mean that everything on the machine is going to be able to use it you have to give the service that MPS is running under writes to read the private keys. It can see the certificate, but that doesn't mean it can actually look at the private key. So if you go in uh, to the, if you right click on the cert, go down to manage private keys, you'll see network service is not there. So we're going to add network service. <coughs> it wants to give it full control, but it only needs read. So I prefer to keep it as little as it needs, apply and OK. So now it has the rights to read the private key. So let's go into here. Let's just leave that there and then bring these guys back up. And let's send one. Oh, OK, here we go. Approve. This is a good sign and you're looking good. We don't, uh, let's, let's refresh our, okay, so here's, this is uh, one of those NAS ID, ignore those. But now if we go down into here where all the real heavy lifting is going on, now we can see that that user has successfully performed MFA against the tenant. So let's recap here for a second. We've issued a certificate from a local CA. It's a five-year cert. For the purpose of server authentication, that certificate has a subject name of CN equals whatever your tenant ID. Uh, and in the uh, enrollment process, that'll be CN equal tenant ID comma OU equal Microsoft MPS extension. It must read that. It has to meet that format. And the other piece is when that certificate is there, you need to ensure that the network service at least has read rights to the private key. Right click, manage private keys, and grant it that right. Once that's done, um, run this bit of code here that generates a prompt for you to provide global admin credentials which are required because you're uh, registering an authentication principle uh, give it a path to your certificate and then let it register that security principle with this uh, MFA app ID 
which is the enterprise app in your tenant and all tenants and then you should be good to go so hopefully this has helped somebody um, it is something that's I think coming up uh, more often and uh, honestly the reason is is because when you use the default method let's go down in here uh, well actually I exported the um, self-signed certificate that that got created All right, let me cancel that let me um, yeah open it okay so here I can see that certificate and I ran this uh, what is it June of last year and so the first problem is is that the self signed certs are only two years long but I think the key issue is is that because they are self signed certificates there's no um, there's nowhere to track them unless you manually track them like create an outlook reminder or you or you find some kind of a PowerShell that runs on a you know like a uh, um, scheduled task and then sends you an email or something along those lines. there's no really good way to do this whereas being issued from my own certificate authority the certificate authority uh, has the capability to um, notify people or at the, at, a, at the very least let you see when certificates are, are coming up to, uh, on expiration so if you got any questions let me know hopefully you guys got a little bit of help from this uh, if you'd like to see anything else I'll be happy to make some more videos have a good day